So the language of Jaja, the one spirit that rules the universe. Emilo, I am that. I am like, you know, part of that. And Trinidad and Tobago we call Shangolan because they say uh, not only each individual has an Orisha, but each country. And Shango happens to be my father, as we say in that tradition. So I paid homage to a number of the other Orisha. The African component is the main component. Uh, we also have a large East Indian population, maybe about 45% East Indian population. So we have a lot of that tradition. We have from China, Syrian, Lebanese, you know, many, many aspects in my country. So John, I'm very blessed, thankful to my four parents and ancestors. That's why before even speaking, I pay homage to my ancestors. With this drum, so it's very scientific that you can get a whole range of um, conversation with this drum being covered on both ends. How, they, how we speak through the drum, because the African language, um, like the Yoruba for example, um, has a lot of intonation, so it's actually musical. So that's why when you even play the drum, it's not just only about playing a rhythm, it's actually the language that is there. Before I would tell the children that um, the drum is the original telephone. So that's the depth of this culture. So that is why I find it so very um, important to emphasize how much my ancestors held on to the tradition. And uh, when I was in Australia, one year, one of the elders told me, Val, I insist that my people speak our languages to our youth, our children, because when your language goes, there goes your culture. So that's why I'm so happy for my people who held on to a lot of that tradition. The drums you are, you are actually speaking, because uh, for example, excuse me then, like with the Yoruba now, if you say, um, I in the O, I in the Ogo, I in the O, I in the Ogo, Ainde is the name of the child and Ogo means precious, right? So in this lullaby, the mother is asking Olodomare, the creator, that's the word in, in the Yoruba, or Edomare, to spare her child, don't let her child die because her child is very special, you know? Yeah. Maja in the Oku, Maja in the Oru, Baba Majala, Baba Majala, Bioku, Majala, Bioru. I in the Oku, I in the Oku. After the banning of the drums, we went on, we used the bamboos. I just bought a smaller one to demonstrate. Um, they grow by the rivers in my country, very big, different sizes. So we use them a lot. Um, they would parade through the streets. I was blessed. Now we're trying to resurrect a lot of it. I would go around in the village with the people playing and singing. They would hit the big ones on the ground to simulate the bass sound and different sizes and strips of the bamboo to make that orchestra. Uh, we had what they call the best village competition. Where we were, or better village, where the villages would compete in all areas of drumming, steel drums, animal husbandry, cooking, you know, food, we have a big fair. So in the community centers, we would have the tutors who would come there to teach the people, you know, um, different aspects of the culture, which would include the drumming and so on. It's fundamentally free. You know, you, can, you come there, you learn to play the instrument. For example, this one, comes from Brazil, like this. You can see parts of the calabash at the bottom. And this one from Ghana. You see? Kashishi, we call it. And then you have again what you call the ansakala. So these you can put around the wrist when you, when you, um, when you play for extra percussion. They put on the legs and so, you know? So the ansakala.
break drums um, from the, the motor car. That's what keep you safe when you get and hit the brake. And um, as I said, you can um, tune them, or well, they come already tuned. Sometimes we, we heat them in Africa too. They even you know bend them and get all sorts of different songs. You can have a whole range of them. And then when you have that with the other parts of the percussion, we call it the engine room in my country, right? So somebody might just play, right? Another, another. Then like what I was saying earlier about the rhythm taken from the Orisha, which would be played on two drums, the omele, right? Either pad, right? But if you play what we call in the double iron, where you're using that pattern, it's like, So, so when you put a lot of all these different patterns together. The mother drum is called the ear. Ear is mother in the Yoruba language. This one you play here on the side, you know. Right? The mother drum now in my country here. This is this is it. And if you notice too, we, we play them um, at, and and between the leg. Eh? See, you can change the tone somewhat by, you know, put the pressure you put. This one we call the omele, right? Yes, the omele. And 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 you see it's covered on both ends, but it's solid wood here and covered with the goat skin and it's hollow on the inside. You can see that now. And they are two uh, drums smaller, a little smaller than this from this family. This family is called the Dundun family. D U N D U N. You have the 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 aspect where you have the ceremonial part, to use a word, you know, where you have the traditional ceremonial aspect. And then also you would be there as young people. So as I tell people, it just gets in the blood, you know, because you, you go to sleep and the drum's going on, you wake up when the ceremony is still going on, and you would be there with your parents. So you're observing all of that, and they would have you play. And sometimes some people might just um, start with the bell, for example, in certain things, you know. Uh, many people here want to be a soloist and so on, but it's very important to have that foundation. So a lot of times you might start off, you know, with the root of the things, you see? So you can learn, you know, by the bells and... Right? Many different types of bells, as you know, in, in Africa, different sizes. Right? All types of sizes, then you can have like a bell orchestra. They are big ones, you play them on the ground and so on. So that's where, um, again, all of this preceded the steel band or steel drum. Here, we use the, the, the recycling again. So I leave it specifically like this. One elementary school I went to, the children who put in garbage in there. <laughs> you know? So instead of a barbecue pit or as a garbage can, we created the instrument. This is the original one, the dudup or dup dup, um, two note one. And as you see, you put sponge at the tip of it, right, to, to get when you have the large notes. That's what happens in the um, 
no, original name Ping Pong, you have the rubber here. But if you were to use it, right? As, you see the, the side of it, we call the skirt. As you see, you, you cut it off. You cut off at different lengths. So as you go into the deeper pans, you leave a longer side, you know, because all of that acts as a sound chamber. You have to add more barrels, you know, as you, you go into the deeper notes, because the notes get larger. People are interested to know where Calypso originated. People are interested to know where Calypso originated. Some said it came from Cuba. Some say British Guyana. Some content seriously it was sung by Moses Cross in the Red Sea. But I told them no, no, no. Trinidad is the land of Calypso. No, no, no. Trinidad is the land of Calypso. Bam, ba, ba, da, be, de, bam, ba, da. Badoo-bam-ba-dam-ba-dam-ba-dam-ba-dam-ba-dam-ba-dam-ba-dam-ba-dam-ba-dam-ba-dam-ba-dam-ba-dam-ba-dam-ba-dam-ba-dam-ba